So I suppose the title of this video does seem a little bit clickbaity, and I'm not normally one to do things like that, but this is literally the best coffee brewer I have ever used. I was fortunate to be able to get a pre-production version of the Pulsar through my friend Matt, who was helping Next Level Brewer um, come up with recipes and just give them general feedback during the development of the Pulsar. I pretty much fell in love with using this brewer, and I was primarily brewing in this brewer only for the past couple of months until the production version came out. And when the production version came out, I bought one because I love it that much. So the Pulsar is the latest offering from the Next Level Brewer Company. And for this offering, they partnered up with renowned coffee nerd and astrophysicist Jonathan Gagne. If you're not familiar with Jonathan Gagne, he's been pretty influential in the coffee community with his testing and research around all things coffee, including authoring his book, The Physics of Filter Coffee, which is an absolutely awesome read, and I highly recommend you pick it up and check it out if you want to learn a lot more about coffee and the science behind coffee brewing. It's absolutely fantastic. One of the results of the collaboration efforts on this brewer is this flow control valve right here. Having a fully adjustable valve like this gives you an amazing amount of control and flexibility with your brewing. Controlling the immersion and percolation phases of your brews and being able to experiment with different combinations of those really gets you some interesting results. One other thing that's really cool about the Pulsar is grind size becomes a little bit less important. Don't get me wrong, it's still important and it's still a factor you need to take into consideration when brewing, but this brewer is very forgiving. So as long as you're in the ballpark with your grind, you're gonna get great results with this. Another thing that's really cool about this brewer being so forgiving is that if you, went a little bit longer than you were planning to on your immersion phase or something like that, you'll still get fantastic results with this brewer. Um, and you'll just sort of learn for next time what you could do differently, but you're still gonna get a very drinkable, very tasty cup of coffee, even if it's not exactly what you were targeting. The Pulsar is made from really nice, really durable food safe plastic, which is fantastic because plastic brewers, unlike ceramic or metal brewers, don't draw as much heat out of your coffee slurry, the, the water and coffee mixture, while you're brewing it, which means the thermal stability of this is much higher than a ceramic or metal brewer or a brewer of you know some other material. Thermal stability is an important factor when it comes to brewing coffee. The more stable you can keep the temperature in your coffee while it's brewing, the more consistent of an extraction you're gonna get and the more repeatable of results you're gonna be able to duplicate. Another design element with this brewer that's really important is that it's zero bypass. And basically what that means is no water can get around the coffee filter while you're brewing without actually going through and making contact with all the coffee particles in the coffee bed first. With traditional pour over or filter brewing, say something like the V60 here, your filter paper doesn't always make full contact with the sidewalls of the brewer. And in a lot of cases, the brewers themselves have ridges in them that are meant to support the filter paper and keep it from fully sticking or seating to the brewer's walls. In that scenario, you get something called bypass, which is where some amount of the water that's above the coffee bed as you're pouring water in and the water level is rising in the brewer, some of that water will find its way through the paper filter before it even makes contact with and goes through the coffee bed. So as that water travels down the side of the filter and in between the filter and the walls of the brewer, Again, it doesn't make any contact with the coffee particles that are actually in the coffee bed at the bottom of the filter. That doesn't mean you can't get good cups of coffee from a V60 or some other type of brewer that has some amount of bypass, because you absolutely can. But what that means is it's much harder to get the same levels of extraction you can get with a zero bypass brewer as easily as something like the Pulsar. In this scenario, all of the water that's in this brew chamber has to go through the coffee bed before it can go through the filter. Therefore, all of your water makes contact with all of your coffee particles. So you have a much greater chance of getting a much higher extraction and a much more tasty cup of coffee because those flavors are going to be intensified instead of potentially being diluted a little bit by having some bypass with a traditional style filter brew. There are ways to minimize bypass with conventional filter or pour over brewing. And one of those ways is keeping the water level in the brewer low. So you wanna keep your water level a little bit lower just above the coffee bed as it's brewing and as it's drawing down, you're basically doing pulse pours and just keeping that water level just slightly above the brew bed of coffee. That way you're not filling the brewer up and as it's you know increasing in, in water size and water weight and pressure, 
there's less tendency for that water to want to push its way and find its way out of you know spots further up the filter and brewer wall another thing you can do to minimize bypass when brewing in a brewer like the fellow stag or the aurea is use what's called a negotiator uh, this one here was printed by coffee nerd tools i'll have a link down in the description for you to check that out but basically the negotiator just smashes your filter up against the walls of the brewer basically you're forcing that paper filter or smashing negotiating that filter to be much closer and tighter to the walls of the brewer therefore minimizing the amount of bypass you would create while you can absolutely get great results utilizing a negotiator getting you know zero or close to zero bypass brewing with those brewers you don't need a negotiator you don't need anything extra with the pulsar you just need this and the filters it comes with and you're good to go. The filters that come with the Pulsar are really high quality and it's really simple to set this up. They just sit down in here and the brew chamber itself or the cylinder here just goes down in there and pinches the filter into the base. There's no way the filter can come out, can get dislodged, anything like that while you're brewing. And it is true 100% zero bypass. So it's simple, but it's a genius design. The last component of the Pulsar is this dispersion cap. This is designed to where you pour your brew water directly onto the top of this cap, and these perfectly spaced and sized holes regulate the flow of water down onto your coffee bed. This ensures full, nice, you know, even consistent wetting of the coffee bed. I kind of think of this as just like a large mellow drip. So if you're familiar with the mellow drip, it's basically the same thing. It's just built in, which is really nice. As far as issues or complaints I have with the Pulsar, there's really only one, and that is that the adjustment valve here is sometimes feels really stiff. Now, when I clean the Pulsar and take it apart, I usually do take uh, the valve all the way out and I clean inside there and make sure there's no coffee particles or anything else in there that could, you know, gum up the movement of the, of the valve. But it is stiff and I did pretty much notice since day one, it is stiff and it is much stiffer than the prototype version. This one is definitely a little bit easier to move, whereas this one is a little bit stiffer. So I don't know if maybe there was a slight material change in the base or something like that, or the tolerances are tighter here. Um, but it is, like I said, noticeably stiffer. So you just need to pay attention to that and make sure that when you're opening and closing the valve, you're kind of bracing the brewer on your carafe because you could potentially kind of tilt this off if you were, you know, really quickly moving the valve and it was kind of stiff. Um, I will say there's no leaks. I've never had a single leak from this thing. So I would much rather have a you know tighter, stiffer valve than a loose one or an easier to turn one that leaks. As far as recipes go with the Pulsar, the options are pretty much endless, but Next Level's got you covered and they've got some really great jumping off point or kind of starting point recipes that they have on their website that I'll have linked down in the description. The beauty of this brewer though, lies within the ability to be able to control multiple variables like percolation time, immersion time, a combination of both of those, doing full percolation, full immersion. You can really do some interesting things. And of course, being able to control all the typical variables we can control with standard filter brewing like, you know, dose amount, grind size, water temperature, those sorts of things in conjunction with what else you can do with the Pulsar really nets you some really interesting results. I typically always start with the dry filter recipe that you can find on Next Level site. I taste the coffee and see what I like about it and maybe what I'd want to change about that brew. If I feel like the coffee is lacking some body, I'll increase the amount of time I do the immersion phase of the brew. Or if the coffee is really soluble or is like a heavier processed coffee, then you can even completely eliminate the immersion portion of your brew and just do percolation. If you're brewing a coffee that's really lightly roasted and is very dense, then you could increase the amount of agitation you do during your bloom phase. There's really endless possibilities of different things you can do to get the results that you're looking for. I will say that probably about 85 or 90% of the time I'm using either the dry filter recipe or the basic recipe because they just seem to work so well for so many different coffees. But for some coffees, I will play with different phases of the brew to try to maximize the results the best I can. It's really easy to get consistently 20 to 22% extractions with the Pulsar that taste fantastic. I've even pushed the extraction beyond 22% with some coffees and gotten some really enjoyable results with no astringency or bitterness or anything like that. So freaking good. So you can really push extractions and you can get some absolutely amazing results. So according to my DI fluids refractometer here, this is a 22.1% extraction and it is absolutely fantastic. Really great juiciness, really good body. Just all the flavor notes of this coffee, the stone fruit, the passion fruit coming through, great body, just an absolutely wonderful coffee. One thing you have to keep in mind, not only with the Pulsar, but with all brewers and brewing methods is that 
the quality of the coffee you're using and the quality of the water you're using matters and it plays a huge role in the final results you're gonna have with that cup of coffee. The Pulsar is not going to make bad or low quality coffee taste good. And it's not going to cover up the fact that you may not be using the greatest quality water. So you wanna make sure you use, again, the best quality coffee and the best quality water you can. It's the same principle with anything. Shit in, shit out. If you use bad stuff going in, you're not gonna have the best results coming out. It's just inherent in how that works. So like I said in the beginning, I know the title of this video kind of sort of seems like clickbait, but for me, this truly is the best brewer I've ever used, and it's gonna be the brewer I use going forward for a long time, I'm sure. So if you're interested in the Pulsar, I've got links down in the description for you to check out. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I bought this version and I have no affiliation with Next Level Brewer, so I don't get anything from that and they didn't give anything to me, but I wanted to supply those links to you guys to check out because I really truly do feel like this is an absolutely amazing brewer that everyone who's interested in coffee should it experience and experiment with. I've also left links down in the description for you to two videos that I really like that also talk about the brewer, one from Aramze and one from Lance Hedrick. So make sure you check those out and give those guys some support. I'm sure you know who they are. With that being said, thanks for watching. Take care and we'll see you on the next video.